Okay, in today's video we're having a look at a customer's uh, Yosu G1000DXA uh, rotator that all of a sudden just stopped working. Um, so yeah, we just I just he sent it up to me um, uh, to physically see what's wrong. I'm about to plug it in with my uh, test cable and then we'll, we'll see if it actually is doing what it's doing. Um, sometimes we have control cable issues um, and whatnot, but I'll just eliminate um, the control cable issue. Uh, he said he tested all the cables and it seems to be okay. So basically, plug him in. Um, present moment, it's there's our. I'll take this back out again. There's our um, one of the marks in there. I already marked these previous. Now I think the rotator has stopped working at this point. I've put the mark on the actual casings markers. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I'll show you that. It's flaring out. So there's one mark there, and the other mark is is in behind that bolt there. You can probably just see it. Okay. So so that shows you where it stopped. I shall uh, plug him in. Yeah, sometimes we just have control cable issues and people send me rotators that are actually work when they put them in the test cable. But not a problem. Um, shall we turn him on? Yep, light's working. Okay, it is sitting at, as you can see, it is sitting at around about 300 degrees. He did mention that um, uh, the actual um, controller was actually in alignment mode. So I don't think this has been aligned um, properly because 300 degrees doesn't seem to be the point that's marked on where the rotator is at the present moment. So I think it's close, but it's not exactly right. So uh, in saying all that, we shall just see if it goes left and right. Oh, definitely no go nowhere. Okay, it's definitely dead. Got nothing going. Uh, okay, okay. Well, well, that eliminates the control cable issue. So we have some other issues. So okay, so we'll disconnect that. I'll get the controller out of the road. I'll stick it over the corner out of the road over here, the road. Get this control test cover out of the road as well. Unplug it. Okay. Well let's uh might just move this down a bit under an angle. Let's turn him over. We'll just remove the actual screws. Where's my trays? There's my trays. So we'll undo all this. Need to get the actual socket out of the road. Um, normally I dewire them um, to physically pull them apart, but I can actually pull these right apart um, and pull limit switches back through this uh, through the hole without uh, disassembling or unsoldering too many parts. So I shall. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll just carry on. But plus you need to get this out of the road to get the, the bottom ring gear off. Uh, bearing ring, I should say, not ring gear, bearing ring. Okay, let's get the, the noise maker in here. Okay, well that's done nice and tight. So, okay, put that in there. Right. You actually see what I'm doing, now you probably can't see what I'm doing. Yeah. Making noise that you couldn't see what I was doing. Well, as you can see, there's the, uh, the mark where the uh, reducer, we just grab the cable and we just fold it up over top and we just lift up the bearing ring and get that out of the road. Yeah. It's not a very old rotator, it was only up for a very short period of time. Um, he, had it for, he had it for four to five years, but it sat in his workshop and he only put it up, it was only, it was only up for about nine months. Um, okay, so there's our bearings. The bearings don't look in too bad a condition, which is probably about right for what the age it is. So I'm going to get the bearings out of the road. I'll just push that back into there for now. Oh, it doesn't want to go there. Okay, let's just stop this flopping around. I'll just put that screw back into there. Just to hold this so it doesn't get in our bloody road. I'm not trying to do things. Yeah, that's better. Right, let's get these bearings out of here. Of course, I picked up a magnet screwdriver and they just want to grab them. Let's 
try not to lose all these. The, the grease doesn't look too bad in the bottom here. It's still a little bit, a little bit um, wet. Normally they go pretty dry, this grease, and there's not a lot of grease here, I can tell you. There's not a lot of grease here at all. So we'll just get these all off. So there we go, we'll just get through these. It's a slow way of doing it, but whatever. My magnet screwdriver wanted to grab all of them and put them back on the track again. So there we go, okay. So let's turn him over. Now get that out of the road. Turn him back down here a bit. Now, our mark is here which indicates where the actual knock block is that actually hits the limit switches. So, let's lift him up without losing all the bearings everywhere. Let's see. Yep, the knock Knock block is in here. Righty -hey. Oh! Whoa! What's going on here? Look, I think I found the problem. Yeah. First off, we'll get these bearings on the road before we actually have them flying over the countryside. I've just found our problem. I'll just get these bearings off here first. Oh, I just picked up, I just picked up this screwdriver again. Pick up the magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, it looks like uh, we've had a the wires have been pulled off. I'll, I'll do these, these bearings up here first. So if I pick this up, it's going to fall all over the countryside. And the bearings all over the floor, and we don't want that. So then we've got to go try to find them or replace them or whatever. So, okay, so let's get these all off here. Oh, that one went the wrong one. This bearing track looks a bit dry too. Not as dry as the bottom ones. Um, it's just a bit drier. You probably can't see it in, in this. Probably can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So, turn it back around to what I found. Wipe my hands, get all this excess grease off here. Okay, I'm going to lift him up. The red wire, which is meant to be attached to the bottom of here, actually when you look really close, look if you can get in there, you can see the remnants of the wire just underneath there. That's where it should be. And you can see there's a big dint and a kink in the wire just here. And the bottom wire is pulled and pushed. These wires are meant to be sitting up in this groove and then they run along and then that way and you can see the dent probably can't see is that you can get the light right angle there's a dent there in that wire that's been hit by the actual I call it the knock block I mean it's a knock bar for the um, or knock block or knock bar for the actual limit swing, limit swing bar so basically when I pulled it off which is sitting in this direction that's where the actual thing was and that's where it stopped working. So these wires uh, have not been put in the right place and they've been sitting too much to the side and or too high and then the bar has come around and just grabbed them and just ripped it right off. So that's probably why it wasn't working because I had thought that maybe it, would, it had hit the limit switches uh, but then when it hit the limit switches you should be able to go back the other way and he could not and as we proved there you couldn't go anywhere and that's the reason why because the wire is actually snapped right off and the wires have been pulled quite tight so yeah the wire is bent probably can't see it in this picture there's a big dent right there let me just get the light in the right angle probably can't a massive big dent yeah so okie dokie and the wire is actually stretched a bit probably can't see it of course but uh, there's the wire has actually got, got stretch marks and where it's been hit and bent it's got a sort of a kink in it as well it's sort of all twisted up so the bar must just hit it and then it, it grabbed the top one snapped it off and also rubbed against the bottom one actually even the other ones the green and the blue the other one in the room they're actually got a slight indentation on them as well so these wires are meant to be sitting 
right up tight in that groove there and that is meant to be up there to hold them into position it is the right place but they're all stretched so I'm have to they're going to be they're meant to be up like that and obviously they weren't and the bars come around here and just go and snap crackle pop and pull that right out and drag the whole thing over like like that and that why is that's why it's not working well I am going to end the video here uh, I'm going to get back in contact with the uh, oops pop the camera I'm going to get back in contact with a customer um, and we shall see what we're going to do from here so um, yeah um, interesting so I thought it was going to be further in I thought it was maybe going to be the um, uh, a uh, BK brake lock up or something like that but the motor's not even turning so we're told why because there's no power to it so so I'll end the video there have a good one and we shall catch you I might even do another video of uh, so I'm going to strip this right the way down I think he said he wanted to do a complete service but I'll verify that with him now we know this is a problem so it, yeah all good no worries catch you next video bye